Black Lives Matter do not care about black lives. They don't care about the black police officers who are working 24-7 to protect us. They don't care about the black-on-black -black crime that happens every week. Well, I'm so happy to be with Leo Torelli, and we had a great visit that we aired uh, last week. But uh, I, I want to tell everyone, I called you because I saw a man that you used to come across so angry that I just wondered who, who you're blowing out today. Now, you were effective with your anger because you were making your point, many times defending somebody, and you were defending them against something that should make anybody angry. But all of a sudden, it looked like you were exposing some things that you had once actually been, let's say, misled or guided by that suddenly you realize this is headed the wrong way. What happened to Leo Terrell for me to see you suddenly on television? Yes, the anger, the zeal, but all of a sudden it was like a, a passionate zeal that we've got to make some corrections or we're in serious trouble. What happened to you? I'll tell you, James, it happened about six months ago, really, when I heard the Democrats who were going to the left so far, it really offended me. But I, this, this Democratic nominee, Joe Biden, went on national radio and told the world that, hey, if you don't vote Democrat, you ain't black. And I was offended. This is a country of equality. This is a country of choice. This is a country where people make personal decisions. And as a civil rights attorney, I feel that no one, no group should be told how to vote, how to think, how to act. When you couple that with the idea that the left wants to take away our law enforcement, defund the police, I was offended. And I felt as a civil rights attorney, I believe in equality protection, and the number one obligation of a country is to protect its citizens. And I just kept seeing that the Democrats were going left, left, left. I looked to the right, and I saw a man in President Trump who was working for the everyday person, not looking at color, not playing the race card, and I felt my destiny was to move to the right, and that's where I'm at now. And you said that as a lifetime Democrat and defending Democrat positions and civil rights and, and believing that you were doing exactly right, but you were a Democrat, but now you're just saying, let's go the other direction. Now, I preach, and, and your former governor and then our President Reagan actually said, hearing what I said about commit yourselves to principles, not parties, not politicians, not personalities, and to the principles in God's Word, and America will forever be great. And he said, amen, I agree, he applauded and he made it clear. So what I'm saying to people is commit to principles that are meaningful yes. and effective. That's what I believe I hear you're saying. And you're saying you, right now, I'm not going with this, this crowd going that way. And I'm going to vote the other way. Do you think that Donald Trump actually wants to do what's best for the black community, for every minority, for our security, our safety? Do you think that's what he really wants? Now tell me the truth. I'm telling you the honest goodness truth. I wouldn't be supporting the first time I've ever voted Republican in my life. So the answer is yes. Donald Trump puts the people, the country, ahead of party. That's what I believe in. I don't believe in belonging to a party first. America is first. Donald Trump has done more for black Americans than the Obama administration, than Democrats in the last 50 years. He's lower unemployment. He's given black Americans an opportunity for another chance with his first step program. He has created economic zones. And more importantly, he has funded historical black colleges. And James, education is the key to breaking the poverty cycle. The Democrats want to keep us in poor schools. They don't want us to have school choice. Before I became a lawyer, I was an educator. And education is very important to me, is why I've been blessed to be here before you. So the principles of Donald Trump are principles that I believe in. Well, I really do appreciate uh, the courage that you manifest, Leo, because if we will return to principles, you know, when you're talking about the importance of education, we've actually used the American people's tax dollars and we've allowed it to happen. And in your own state is a great example of where the wealth creators allowed their wealth to endow the universities that attacked the very free market system that gave them the wealth to be able to endow. And we've taken our tax dollars and we've taken the public schools totally away from everything that made America great. We're teaching against all the things that made this nation the greatest, most prosperous, most benevolent nation in history. 
And, and that's got to stop. This New York contractor, businessman, is upset about that. He wants to see that changed. He wants people in our schools to be taught not only that they can pray or they can talk about God or freedom or whatever they want to talk about, but that they need to be taught the truth about America and not lies. The media is in an all-out assault, the left-leaning media. They are an all-out attack force against everything pertaining to life and godliness. All life is precious, not only from the cradle to the grave, but in the womb until birth and till the grave. All life is precious. I'm concerned, and I've heard you express it, the Black Lives Matter movement has become something taking advantage of an opportunity where someone did a terrible wrong and I'm concerned about the core leadership because in the Black Lives Matter's own written published statement, it's anti-God, anti-biblical, anti-nuclear family, really. What's your opinion about that? You have, sub you have summarized it to perfection. I'm 100% opposed to the Black Lives Matter manifesto and their doctrine. And here's the problem, James. The Democratic Party has ad adopted the Black Lives Matter manifesto, and they have moved the party to the left. Black Lives Matter do not care about black lives. They don't care about the black police officers who are working 24-7 to protect us. They don't care about the black-on-black -black crime that happens every week. They're using incidents, very small incidents involving officers and black citizens to profiteer to instill fear among blacks that, that black people are subject to police abuse 24-7. That is a lie. That's not true. They need to be exposed. And, and what has happened is they're shaking down corporations. They're shaking down individuals to believe that they represent black America. Black Lives Matter do not represent Leo Terrell and 99% of all black Americans. Jay Richards and I, he wrote Money, Greed, and God. We wrote a book years ago at the same time that we were rejoicing that America had reached a place that we could have a minority, a black president, we rejoiced in that, even though we were concerned that some of the influences on his life might work against what's best for the American people and even for freedom and even for the blacks of which he was a part. We rejoiced in that. But Jay Richards and I wrote a book and we talked about the war on poverty that was launched uh, by Johnson. Isn't it interesting, Leo, that it was Democrats who slowed civil rights, Democrats that stood against the Voting Act, Democrats that were not Lincoln's party in the Civil War, and then it's like they turned their backs totally on the possibility that Republicans could do something right when, in fact, they've done so much right, like passing civil rights legislation, which you understand. But what Jay Richards and I wrote in Indivisible so emphatically is that what they call the war on poverty has actually proved to be a war on the poor. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And they kept people who are poor, blacks, dependent on them. That's what their plan was, to keep them dependent on these extreme left Democrats and to depend on government. What the right has done, what President Trump has done, is to give people a choice, individual freedom, self-determination. That's what the right provides. But the left and the Democrats ever since the 60s with this war on poverty, they have created a dependency. And unfortunately, a lot of blacks don't see the outlet. They don't see the alternative. I've seen the light. I've seen that we can break away from that democratic mindset and move to a better America where I can make my own choices. And that's what the Republicans, and that's what Donald Trump has been trying to convince the people for the last three and a half years. I grew up in Austin, very, very poor. I moved at least 15 times. Nearly all the houses did not face a street, either an alley, a dirty river, and one or two were actually on the backside of dumps. And uh, I never had anybody, however, as a, as a very poor boy, from age uh, five to 15, I never had anyone tell me to hate people that had a home, to hate people that had a car. We never had a car. Never had a car my entire life as a boy. And, and, and so we walked everywhere, we rode a bus. But the point is, nobody told me to hate people that had something. And nobody told me that somebody was supposed to take care of me. So at age 12, I went to work 
and I've been working, I'll be 77 in about three weeks, and I've been working since I was 12, and listen, nothing could stop me because I didn't believe the lies. Nobody owed me something. I was 10 to 20% white in the areas where I lived. I watched the fights all the time, even racial tension. I didn't pick sides. I didn't understand why people wouldn't think highly of a black or a Hispanic. I didn't understand that. You see, I didn't buy the lies of the left or the lies of the deceiver. And opportunity is here if we have freedom. We are losing freedom, Leo, and it's, it's making me very disturbed and angry. God says, if you'll return to me, I'll make up for the years the locusts have eaten, the pandemic has eaten, the, the misdirection and the deception and the dissension has caused. I'll make it up if you'll just return to me with your whole heart. There's a call for that next week in Washington. God's calling for it today. Leo, you can do all you can as a civil rights attorney and be on all the talk shows talking about what's wrong, but there's only one thing that'll make things right. This fatherless kid met the perfect father, and he shows me there's no limit on freedom except that which we allow to be put on it. He sets us free. Galatians 5.1, it's for freedom Christ set us free. You now see the importance of that freedom. I am seeing you becoming a freedom fighter. And it's because of the love of people who need freedom that Leo Terrell has become that fighter. Am I right? You are right. But I want to say one thing. I have been blessed to meet you. Every time I'm listening to you, I'm inspired. And you have helped me find the route to find that perfect father. I feel the compassion in you. I feel so much symmetry between us and what we have to do in this country, what we have to bring everyone together to, to, to work for that perfect union, to understand that there is only one perfect father, to break away from this dependency. We have to educate, make people understand that mm -hmm. there is one perfect father. We work together. And I have felt that every time I listen to you, you have helped me see the light. And I find it so heartwarming, so Fulfill. I'm warm. I'm happy. I'm inspired to help that you can help me and we can help others find and, and follow our perfect father. You are, you are my brother forever, my friend. Forever. We have the same father. And I once said to God, I don't notice people's color. God's colorblind. And I heard God in my spirit say, I'm not colorblind. I love color. I like a bouquet. <laughs> I like diversity. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. And I want to tell you, Leo Terrell, you are a beautiful person. Now, I want to say something to you, Leo, but I want everyone listening to me, please hear this. First time I talked to Leo, I said, you don't even understand the greatness God's put in you. You don't understand what he can do with it if you just leave the clay of your life in God's hands. All of you listening to me right now, and I wish everybody in America to hear this, you are a uniquely designed body part. You are a part of the body of Christ if you will receive him as father through faith in Jesus Christ. You are born into the family of this perfect father. You become a member of the body of Christ, the church against which the gates of deception and division and destruction are not to prevail. So to all of you, just as I say, and Leo, you're listening, you are so magnificently designed. If you allow him to arise and shine in the fullness of his glory and his grace in you, you are going to shake the gates of hell and you're going to set people free that have been held captive by the deceiver, by division, and by destruction. And we're going to see a great awakening in America. God bless all of you watching. Share this with everyone with eyes to see and ears to hear. Share it with those who have been blinded by the God of this world, and he'll open the eyes of the blind. Leo, you're my brother. Are you walking with me, seeking to do the yeah. Father's will? Yes. I love you. <laughs> I, just, I, I tell you what, buddy, we're going to be friends forever and we're going to see forever. God awaken this yes. nation and set people free. God bless you, Leo. God bless you, James. Love you. Love you too.